Hello, um, I'm Shweta Kulkarni and welcome all of you for our new initiative Ask Astronera. Um, so it's been a few days that lots of people have been asking me to do a live stream and talk about astronomy. A lot of people have a lot of questions about it that they want me to answer. Uh, so here I am. Um, hi Kavita, uh, very glad that you found time to join us and I hope more and more people join. Um, I'm going to do this live session every Saturday from now onwards and um, before the, these sessions I would like you guys to let me know what all you want me to talk about. You can uh, comment it under this video and in the next video I will um, answer the questions that you have had in mind or pick up the topic that you wished me to talk about. Um, so this question always pops up uh, whenever I go for the stargazing programs or uh, whenever I meet somebody. Um, little children always ask me how they can um, do career in astronomy and their parents are also you know very intrigued about it and they want their children uh, to grow up to become an astronaut or astronomer and of course it's uh, you know a very interesting field for everybody so I'm going to talk about that a little bit today uh, actually, this topic has been covered by Parshati Patel in one of our previous videos. Uh, she's our mentor and uh, she was guest on our program AstroStream. So she had joined it and uh, she has answered a lot of questions. But I think I'm going to be providing more of my personal view today. Um, so uh, first of all, I'd like to tell you guys what I am doing, how I got to this point and then we can get into more generalized stuff. I hope that's okay. Uh, so I have been interested into astronomy since I was very young and everybody kept telling me that uh, physics and mathematics are the key points if you want to get into astronomy and uh, that's mostly true. Uh, so after my 10th uh, standard I decided to take science field. So for 11th and 12th I, de I, I did science. And um, after that, there were a few choices in front of me. Um, so I could either do BSc Physics, BSc Mathematics or go for Engineering. Um, I didn't want to do any Engineering. I was more into Theoretical Physics or uh, Theoretical part of all this. Um, so I decided to go for BSc Physics. Uh, but after a year, I figured that there is a university in England which offers distance learning course in astronomy. Uh, this university is University of Central Lancashire in UK and they offer distance learning bachelor's degree in astronomy. Uh, but you have to invest a lot of years to get this degree. There are about 18 modules in this course. Um, you have to complete all these modules to get your degree. Each year you can take maximum of four modules, but it also depends on your tutor, your uh, your mentor in the university. So your mentor or tutor actually tells you depending on how much you're scoring in your subjects, how many modules you can take each year. So I end up taking about two modules a year. So it's going to take overall about eight to ten years to complete this whole degree course. But on the advantage side, it's a distance learning program. So me being an entre um, astronomer and entrepreneur, uh, it's kind of good for me so that I can keep doing my astronomy popularization activities with Astronera and study part time. Um, but uh, there was a girl who came to me a while ago and she she was very firm that she wanted to get into University of Central Lancashire and do distance learning. Though the university is extremely good, the support, the tutor, everything that you get at the university is really good. I wouldn't really recommend our Indian uh, students here to opt for this distance learning right away unless and until you actually are firm that there is no better way than this. First of all is because it takes uh, lots of time. You have to invest so many years just to get the bachelor's degree. So in the time duration of about eight years, you can get bachelor's, then you can also get master's and you can do PhD as well if you um, go on the normal study road. 
uh, but at University of Central Lancashire that doesn't happen. Secondly, it's a distance learning program. Uh, so you don't uh, you don't get to have that much interaction with other students. Uh, so you know I think that also is really important if you want to get into astronomy because uh, lots of things also depend on how many connections you make in the field and it's true for any field I guess right uh, so uh, being distance learning student you don't get to interact as much uh, personally virtually of course there are ways that the university provides uh, but then also another thing for the placements so though the distance learning students have um, placement offers with University of Central Lancashire. Uh, mind you that most of the people who are doing these course are elderly course, uh, elderly people and they are taking this course after they have, you know, succeeded into one kind of career. So it is kind of their second career for them or second option for them to study astronomy. Uh, so that's about my university. Um, there's a question uh, that Net Galactic has asked. Let me answer that. Uh, what about masters in physics? Uh, yes, you can do masters in physics, but I guess uh, the most convenient route, if you want to get into theoretical astrophysics, is that you do BSc in physics and then you can opt for masters in astrophysics. Of course, you can do masters in physics, and then for your PhD, you can go get into specifics of you know any particular subject in the field of astronomy uh, because astronomy is not just one subject there are so many you know sub subjects under it um, there is planetary science there is radio astronomy there is astrochemistry there is astrobiology uh, and you have so many options to choose from uh, so you know while doing your bachelor's in physics i i, I would suggest that uh, you look for what your interest lies within. For me, myself, I, I prefer cosmology uh, and I only figured this out when I took the separate module of cosmology in my university. Um, so while doing your BSc Physics, if you can decide what where your interest lies, you can uh, take that take that up while you do uh, Masters in Astrophysics and then go ahead and do PhD um, in depth. Um, in your favorite topic under the field of astronomy um, yeah so for for the students in India this would be like the general path of studies uh, after completing their 10th uh, they have to opt for science stream uh, they have to um, you know complete their uh, science for 11th and 12th and after that um, they can either go for BSc physics BSc mathematics or otherwise they can opt in for um, uh, engineering so there are some great institutes in India that I'd like to suggest which can uh, you know offer you uh, good education in the field of astronomy uh, the first I would suggest is Indian Institute of Astrophysics which is in Bangalore uh, they have bachelor's master's PhD program everything so what you get to do in IIA is that you do BSc physics MSc astrophysics and then you can also complete your PhD in the same universe uh, same institute uh, then there is Ayuka in Pune inter-university center of astronomy and astrophysics uh, where you can do PhD program Ferguson College in Pune offers master's degree in astrophysics uh, so you can complete it from there um, for this you have to consider this entrance exam called GEST uh, now honestly I cannot go into much depth of this examination otherwise this talk will only be educational uh, but we are specifically talking about uh, careers in the field of astronomy so what career choices would you have like what jobs uh, would you take after you do your studies so mostly if you are a theoretical astrophysicist you will end up either being a research scientist or a university faculty or if your if your strength lies more in computer science uh, you you might get into some observatories which handle big telescopes and stuff like that uh, for engineering students uh, you could get into uh, designing specific satellites and stuff like that 
and uh, for engineering students i would suggest there is this institute called iist so it's indian institute of space and technology where uh, people from isro directly interact with you i think and uh, you get to do your btech from there and uh, that's the best possible option if you want to get into isro indian space research organization uh keep this mind iist indian institute of space and technology where you can do um engineering in technology so yeah otherwise uh, if if you get into some university which is abroad um you get amazing placement options uh, one of my friends she is from california and uh, she studied she she did her engineering and after that she said that she had opportunities to get into spacex and you know even these private institutes which are coming up uh, there are lots of startups which are coming up in the field of astronomy so you might as well you know just check th- those out like just even if you google the startups in the field of astronomy or like the private organizations like spacex and stuff like that uh, you can find job opportunities there i think what it takes uh, primarily to become an astronomer is the problem solving ability and uh, your uh, you know curiosity to ask questions uh, so you know that's that's like the basic thing that you can start up with if you are just in 8th 9th standard right now you have lots of time to decide what subject you like in the massive umbrella of astronomy and go ahead accordingly so you can start off by reading lots of science fiction books or science books whatever it is uh, now you can do lots of online courses like the ones on astronera.org so with by doing this what i mean to tell you guys is that you need to understand what exactly you like in the field of astronomy which will help you decide if you want to get into engineering if you want to get into astrophysics or if you want to get into um practical astronomical you know observations and stuff like that i'd also like to tell you while i'm talking about this there are some website that i found out where you can contribute to even if you are not you know academically pursuing astronomy so these are some interesting websites that i'd like to you know quote for you or maybe i could just copy paste this content that i have in the comment section um so there are these websites where you can actually okay i cannot copy paste this okay so i'll just talk about them so uh, there is american association of variable star observers where uh, you can do real science with variable stars of all types um, i think you can also observe your own and post your observations up there then there is transitsearch.org which will help you find transiting exoplanets so uh, you can you know do your own observations up there and learn more about exoplanets and you know th- this kind of helps you gain more practical knowledge about it uh, then there is galaxyzoo.org where uh, you can classify galaxies way better than computers could uh, there is seti at home uh where unused computer cycles are put to work um, searching for alien life so you can check that out there is sky and telescope magazine which actually is very good if you are starting off just wondering about the field it will tell you all about uh, when where and how some astronomical programs are taking place meteor showers and stuff like that um then there is heavensabove.com which is like my go to site even when i was trying to spot the comet i went up there uh, the site has everything that you need uh, if you want to know where international space station is going to pass in the sky if you want to know uh, wh- how to spot the comet where it's going to be how the position of the sky is going to be there just go on heavensabove.com put up your location up there and you'll find lots of information on their website uh then there is international occultation timing association so this helps you discover the shape of asteroids or mountains on the moon so it's also worth to check uh then there is international dark sky association uh which uh, you know you can use to know uh, the areas where there is less light pollution and you can go there to observe the beautiful skies 
then there is globe at night so tracking light pollution again for the same stuff apart from this uh, i would also like to tell you to download this uh, this app called stellarium so with stellarium you can uh, use uh, you i better suggest that you download this on your computer on your laptop rather than on your phone uh, at least it's my suggestion so stellarium actually tells you the position of the stars in the sky and you can better understand the constellations and stuff with stellarium um uh, there is also this beautiful uh, app by nasa uh, i think it's called nasa eyes so if you download that it gives you amazing view of all the planets all the missions that nasa has sent uh, so you know you might also like exploring in into that it's as if you are an astronaut and you are in space and you can go on whichever planet that um, you would like yeah so i think uh, this is a bit about how you can start off if you want to do your career in astronomy we spoke a little bit about how to uh, develop your basic curiosity like to read books or go on the internet to watch some online courses um, understand if you really like the subject what what you really like in it then you can do bsc physics or mathematics and then you can do masters in astrophysics and then there is phd and you can get jobs mostly of research scholars or uh, university professors and stuff like that um so uh, this this is it for today's session with uh, ask astronera with shweta so if you have more questions and uh, more suggestions of what subject you would like me to talk about in the next episode uh, comment on this video and i will talk about it next time uh, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, astronera and uh, follow us on social media so that you are updated with all the information that we have been doing or what's going on with astronomy uh, stay tuned and thank you so much